Hey guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design and today we're going to be looking at how to create hover effects on summary galleries. So you can see here that as I hover over each image, the text and the, the title and the read more and the metadata are appearing on hover. Okay, so I've added my summary block onto the page and in terms of targeting, what if you have multiple summary blocks, but you only want it to apply to a specific summary block? Well, what you can do is if you have it in an index page, each, each section in the index page gets a unique section ID. So if you go into inspect and you can come up to the section ID and you can see oh, that's for the one above it. This one has an ID of recent articles. So you can wrap all the code that we're going to put inside of a hashtag recent articles inside of curly brackets and then any code you put in here is only going to apply to the summary block in this section and you can do a similar thing for a regular page if you only want the code to apply to a summary block on a specific page if you jump into the code and you go to this one so if you go and find main main page and then you go down to um, you can see it's SQS layout, SQS grid, all of that. But we, what we want is the page ID. So if you just copy that page ID, you can say, okay, hashtag, whoops, hashtag page ID, and then put your code inside those curly brackets, and it will only apply to the summary block on this page. But if you want this code to apply to all your summary blocks, that's fine. Then just don't wrap it in anything, and, and it will apply to everything. Okay, so to get started, what we want to do is insert your summary block, and right now I have it on grid. We'll go over how to do it for carousel and wall, but first let's just start with how to do it for the grid. Okay, so I need all of this bottom information to appear over the picture. So if I jump into the code, I can see that each individual thumbnail and title and all of that is called summary item and then here we go below the thumbnail all of that information is wrapped in a div with a class of summary content so we can just copy that summary content because we're gonna want to move this from below we're gonna want to position it over this image to do that, we're going to give it a position of absolute. It disappeared, but that's okay. We're going to give it a color of white because we want it to appear over the image and it's going to be hard to see if the text is black. We're also going to give it a top property of 50%, a left property of 50%. So you can see that it moved the content down 50% from the top and it also moved the content over 50% from the left. But all of that is happening from the top left corner of this section. So even though technically the, the top left corner is section, our content as a whole isn't sectioned or isn't centered. So how do we do that? Well, we can use the transform translate property I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. It's just transform and then translate and we're going to move it by its width over 50% and we're going to move it by its height up 50%. So now the center of the content is in the center of the screen, not the top left hand corner, which is exactly what we want. And I'm also going to copy in some vendor prefixes just to make sure that this works on every browser. Again, I'll of course have this code in the description as always so you guys can just copy and paste but I definitely want to walk you guys through this because it's important to know what is going on behind the scenes. So now we have the content in the center. This is how we want it but now we have to give it some animations because we only want it to appear when we hover over the image. So we already looked in the code and we know that each one of these gets a class of dot summary item. So let's say, okay, when we want to hover over the summary item, we then want this content to fade in. So I'm going to remember that class, okay, dot summary item. And 
I'm gonna open up some curly brackets and I'm gonna say, okay, when we hover over, actually I'm gonna give it a hover property. So when we hover over dot summary item, we want the following things to happen. We want the image, the thumbnail image. So put IMG and then open up some more curly brackets. We want the image to get darker. So I'm gonna copy in these WebKit filters, this filter. So the brightness is gonna to go to 50% brightness when we hover over summary item. So let's see if that worked. And it did, cool. So now when we hover over, the image gets darker, which is exactly what we want. And now we're gonna below the image curly brackets, we're going to define what we want to have happen to dot summary content. So we're gonna open up some more curly brackets brackets after dot summary content and we're gonna say, okay, we want the opacity to be one when we ho hover over it. So then we have to come up here and we say opacity zero. Okay, so that disappeared just like when we what we want. So now when I hover over it, cool. Now everything is appearing and the image is getting darker, which is exactly what we want. And one last thing that I'm going to do is add transitions because it just kind of pops on right now and I want it to fade in nicely. So under dot summary content, I'm gonna say transition all, I want it to be 0.5 seconds and I'll give it a an ease. Now you can see the brightness of the image is it doesn't have the transition, but the title and text is fading in nicely. So now to get the transition to work on the image, on the brightness, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and we're going to say image, open up some curly brackets and paste in that transition right there. And if you save that, then now the brightness fades in as well as the text. So that's how you do it for the grid layout. The code that we have currently that works for grid also works for wall. So I'm just gonna save that and you can see it works perfectly for wall. Okay, so if we go to edit and then we go to layout and we change it to carousel, um, all we have to do is add a little bit of code at the top and we're going to say dot summary item, open up some curly brackets and say position relative. Because we're positioning the summary content with absolute, we just have to give it a relative parent anchor to align to. So cool, if you're gonna use the carousel, make sure you throw this little code in there. If you're gonna use the other two, wall and grid, then you're good to go. So one thing to account for is that this effect isn't going to look very good on tablet or mobile because the titles are probably too long to show up in this tiny little screen. So you can see these two are okay, but this one's getting cut off, this long title. And on mobile, like no chance, you can't even see anything. So it's best to wrap this code in a media query so that it only shows up on larger screen sizes. So to do that, say at media screen and and then open up a parenthesis min width and we'll give it something like 800 pixels. So anything larger than a tablet will get this cool hover effect and anything smaller than that won't give the hover effect. So now we have to open up our brackets and go down to the end of the code and add the closing bracket. And we'll save that. So now we still have the cool hover effect on desktop, but when we go down to tablet, the carousel is appearing normally. And when we go down to mobile, the carousel appears normal. So this is a way just to account for all screen sizes to make sure that our content is usable, but that we have this really cool hover effect on desktop. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please reach out through my website and contact me or leave a comment down below.
Please subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna have tons more content coming about how to customize your Squarespace website through custom CSS and make it more professional. Thanks.